Hi friends. Oh my gosh. I'm doing another live and here we are. I'm so excited to be here with you. Um, we are going to bring in our trusty um, host, Miss <laughs> Kristen Mandel from Wild World Mama. She also happens to be my brand manager and she's going to jump in today and we are going to chat about all kinds of things. The most important topic to talk about is the questions we've been getting most about. So are you uh, a midwife, um, a midwifery student, a doula, a childbirth educator, a mama? Do you have questions that you want to run by a 20-year veteran midwife? Hey, that's me. You can totally send me, you can send me a Facebook, Instagram. Um, I am Midwifery Wisdom um, on Instagram and Art of Birthing on Facebook. And you can send me an email. And of course, you can check out my website, midwifrywisdom.com, if you want to ask any questions. But y'all, I have something really exciting to tell you today. Oh, there she is. Hi, Chrissy. Yeah. Hi. Hi. How are Hi. you? You're fuzzy, but hopefully the Wi-Fi will catch up. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Well, I got a new router and things. I so. find it very interesting that we'll I see. have better Wi-Fi most places I am internationally than you do outside Chicago. I think that's very interesting. <laughs> Yeah, I, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. It is very interesting. Yeah, I don't know. But well, am I still fuzzy? It's getting better. And you're coming into focus. Ah, less pixelated. It's just a slide. Am I? It's like a sharpening tool <laughs> in Photoshop. Oops, it just blurred. <laughs> Never mind. It's going backwards. <laughs> okay, well, we'll try. I'll try. If it gets really bad, then I'll just jump off and jump back on, on my okay. hotspot. We'll, we'll do okay so, with we'll that. see. We'll see how it goes. Yeah. How are you? Okay. I, I stayed up till 3.30 in the morning last night writing. Oh. And oh. then when I was going nice. to bed, I was like checking my schedule and I was like, shit, tomorrow I have like 7, 8, 9 a.m. appointment. Oh my God. This is crazy. I have to set my alarm. I only slept for four hours. I hop out of bed. <laughs> oh, I jump no. on the Zoom consult call. In like three minutes, five minutes, nobody's showing up. And I'm like, this is weird. <clears throat> yeah. Well, 3 a.m. was already tomorrow. So when I looked at my tomorrow, I looked at my next day's schedule. And so all those meetings are tomorrow. So anyway, here mm. I am. Hi. Good to see you. So there was a panic no for reason. no reason. <laughs> and four hours of sleep for no reason. <laughs> but anyway, here we are. How are you? It's What's true. going on in your world? I'm doing good. It's evening time. My husband's trying to keep the children quiet. <laughs> they don't scream and holler. He's and really so. succeeding. Good job. Yeah, well, for the moment, but we'll um, see. I just, I love that. I just want to take a minute and just comment on like the crazy time zone reality, global reality that we are in. It's so crazy. I mean, it's mm -hmm. nighttime on Thursday for you. Okay. Thursday. It's Thursday here. Yes. Yes. Thursday evening. Thursday evening there. And it yes. is, you know, mid morning on Friday here. Ta da. And not only that, right? We're a season. Exactly. Season it's starting too. to become spring. Spring flowers are out and birds are singing. Yeah. And you guys are going into fall. And it's, it's fall. It's so here. crazy. Yeah. yeah. Life. Well, it's going to be it's amazing soon. that way. I, I have just so much yeah. um, enjoyed experiencing the, the juxtaposition, the worldliness, the connection that, that the internet mm -hmm. brings us. Um, what did we do before the internet? It's crazy. I don't know. I don't, <laughs> don't know. <laughs> don't know. I don't even want to think I about it. Well, I can have yeah. some great consults. As many people know, um, I do a lot of consulting for midwives and midwifery students and folks who are trying to grow a business or trying to deal with some kind of clinical issue. Um, and I've had some really interesting consults in the last couple of days um, about a uh, lot businessy questions. And um, it's coming mm -hmm. at a perfect time because I'm really excited to share that I and my amazing team, who Kristen's a part of, um, we really hustled this uh, last month, and we put together we, we put together an awesome, awesome resource. Um, so yeah, yeah. Before we get to those questions, I just want to give a little like shout out to this this problem that most midwives are seeing. So for 
2019 and previous for several, many, many decades, um, you wanted to be a midwife, you apprenticed, you took the training, you took the test, whatever you did, um, and you hung out your shingle, right? That was kind of the way we did things. So you got an ad in the yellow pages, yes. put a sign on the building, <laughs> and you put flyers at the local co-op. And you got clients just like, just from doing that. And, um, mm -hmm. and so everything has changed. Everything has changed. Oh yeah. And um, one of the things that I feel really excited about these days is that I get to use my decades of experience marketing both um, brick and mortar businesses, but also online businesses because now mm -hmm. everyone's online. Like people are not actually walking into your storefront. They're certainly not browsing the co-op uh, board <laughs> because they're, you know, their glasses are clogged <laughs> from yeah. the mask or whatever. Like they're just, like it's just not, it's the, the methods that we use yeah. to attract clients is not what we do now. So I'm just so, so excited yeah. to be able to distill my years of experience into something that's really, really helpful. Um, because as you know, I have mm -hmm. been international for four years now and um, yep. traveling for many years um, at the same time growing a business. Um, and we, we have definitely grown. We are a, a team with a bunch of people. We create a lot of stuff and it's pretty awesome to yes, see that <laughs> success. So I'm really excited to share this and we put it all in a course. It's called Marketing for Midwives. Um, and mm -hmm. it is so much more than you think. I think that's the biggest takeaway. Mm -hmm. I don't actually know quite how to communicate yeah. how much more it is. So, um, yeah. Yeah. Well, anyway, we have some questions. Well, really dives deep. But yeah. you, you've been. Yeah. What's really nice about it is it. specifically yeah. midwives. Go mm -hmm. for it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So some of these questions. So we're, I guess it's just today will be like a conversation about like marketing and business and just in specifically for the midwifery birth yeah, world. Yeah, birth business. Realm. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Unique. Yeah. So um, where do you start as a new midwife, right? Mm -hmm. You've graduated. Yeah. Yeah, this is a real problem. I get this, I get this message a lot. And I'm glad that um, you've got this on your list um, from the questions we get, because I get this all the time, like, okay, I'm about to graduate, or I just graduated. Um, there's like, four jobs in the entire country for midwives right now. Like, I'm not exaggerating. Um, you know, yeah. of all the birth centers in the country, um, only a few are hiring at a time. And there are very few home birth midwives that employ other midwives. And so the vast majority, like 80 to 90% of the midwives in the United States, I think even higher than that, are self-employed. Um, and so right. midwives graduate midwifery school or are seeing their impending completion of training. And they're like, okay, so I'm, I guess I have to start a business. But midwifery school is not business school and you don't get any of that know-how. So you either beg, yeah. borrow, and steal from your community saying like, help me do this, or you hire someone, which is unlikely because you haven't made any money yet, um, or you struggle right. through the muck on your own. And, you know, I've, I've given a lot of um, talks on this. Um, there's a lot of Google, you know, you can Google a lot of info about starting a business. The Better Business Bureau can be a good resource. Um, but ultimately, um, it's a lot, a lot of slogging through the mud to try to find what you need if you aren't already a naturally an entrepreneur. So I put together a course um, a mm -hmm. couple months ago, and it's called Start a Midwifery Business Right. And I just distilled all that data um, so that you don't have to. Um, and mm -hmm. I think it's at a pretty valuable price point compared to hours and hours and days and days of research or paying professionals. So it puts together all yeah, of the like big time. legal tax um, business issues so that when you're talking about right from the ground, like how do you get a taxonomy code right. and, and how do you, um, you know, get an NPI number and how do you, do I have to pay employee tax? How do I, do I have an independent contractor and what about state laws and all that? So we go through all of those yeah. like actual nuts and bolts business details in that course. Uh, but mm -hmm. then another big part of starting is like, what about how do I get the clients? And that is what this new yeah. marketing for midwives course is about is setting yourself up in the digital sphere to have as much mm -hmm. clout as your competition, because that's honestly how you get the business. 
Yeah. Yeah, for sure. The way you position yourself exactly. in your messaging is just exactly. huge, mm-hmm. huge. So that's good. That's good. Yeah, that one course, really the starter midwifery business, right, course, that kind of sets the foundation, yeah. right? Yeah. Those little like nitty gritty pieces. And then from there, you're like, okay, I have all yeah. the things. Now what? Now yeah, what? Exactly. You know, how do I get the people? So th- yeah. yeah. So, so we go through in sure. this new course, we go through um, really setting up a website that converts so that people who land there actually end up calling you. Um, we talk about list management because this is like the most important yes. free way um, to get what I call word of mouth baby marketing, womb marketing. Um, and uh, and we go through obviously all of the social media channels and how you make that happen. So it's a really comprehensive course. I would say if you went through it start to finish, it was probably be about 20 hours of content. Um, certainly yeah take breaks you know like don't work for 20 hours but <laughs> your brain you're willing to work. yeah um but we, we did yeah. a really unique thing this time my my um administrative um manager anna and i uh sat down and we did a full tutorial on how to set up your email marketing system which most midwives don't really understand they don't understand that yeah. you know email is still king it really still like is the Mm -hmm. platform that you need to manage. Um, And so there's a lot of different list management systems out there, but using um, one to really nurture your audience and using it so that you can kind of plug and play. Like we set up Mm -hmm. these sequences so that your people Mm -hmm. feel like they're getting personal connecting emails with you. And they are, I mean, you wrote them, they are personal, they are connecting. But if you sat down to email mm-hmm. every single person that like follows you or joins your list, you would have no time left. So this automated system really does both. Mm-hmm. It like buys your time back and it nurtures your new connection so that they feel like they're part of your inner tribe, which is really what makes the difference in marketing. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's huge. It's huge. And that's one of those confusing elements. I think not even just for birth workers, yeah, just exactly. for business owners in general, are like a list. Oh, yeah. okay. Why is yeah. it relevant? But you really cover that. And the fact you've got like a whole tutorial yeah. that kind of like walks it you does, through yeah. is amazing. Yeah, it was really it was fun to shoot because um, obviously Anna and I have bounced <laughs> ideas back and forth for like a year or more about yeah. how we're doing this. And so to take our learning mm-hmm. curve and then like turn it into uh, teaching, it was really fun. <laughs> it was like a nice full circle. It yeah. Was really fun. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, you do it. You've yeah. done it. So you learn like what works, what doesn't, and you yeah. know that. So now it's applying that knowledge to help other That's people, right. which is awesome. So what would you say to people who feel like selling or marketing is icky? Yep. <laughs> I, I hear that a yep. lot. It's like a, like a mindset yep. thing. Yeah. I've heard yeah. that too. And honestly, I have the same kind of trepidation like, you know, if you follow mm-hmm. me here or you follow me on my various social media, if you're watching the replay here on YouTube, like I sell a lot of content to a lot of midwives, um, but I really don't want to be sleazy or um, really make people feel gross about it as well. Like that's a concern about me too. So I think there's been this real mm-hmm. misconception around like what marketing is. Um, yeah, like marketing yeah. has been somehow associated with car salesmanship <laughs> like yes. this car salesmanship. and that, hey, that hey. is not what it is <laughs> yeah. at all actually no. marketing is really be, right? just yeah. targeted relationship development is what i would call it yeah. and so what, what we're That's doing what is we're just creating space in our business for our potential customer that's all we're doing mm-hmm. because if you yeah. do your marketing right, you will only attract your potential customer. And then that mm-hmm. potential customer will only take action because it feels like a sacred yes to them. And so your only yeah. job really is to be visible, present enough that you attract the right people with the right messaging and then nurture them in such a way that they feel like they belong somewhere because we all want to really belong. They align with your right. beliefs and your history and your, your why, like what you're doing um, so that they, they yeah. sit up and pay attention. And then when you have something for your audience, you just let it into the world. You just release it and say, Hey, I made this. And the right people are yeah. like, yes, that's what I've been looking for. And there's no sales actually yeah. even required. You know what I mean? Right. You just provide value, right? You hone in exactly. your Exactly. But it's not possible value. if you don't. Right create 
your business avatar if you don't like make yourself known yes and it's also not possible yeah. if you don't like tell your people they're in the right place like tell them they belong mm -hmm. so so that's right. really what marketing is it's like making yourself known and then you know inviting your people in and then it just happens really effortlessly and it's been really fun to see yeah. that like um you know what i create is not right for anyone my business in supporting midwifery you know other midwives um in the country or in the world might not be right for everyone like i i don't intend to be universally useful um i just intend to be right. incredibly useful for the person that it works for and when I yeah. get that feedback, it's just like, it's everything. And so the same thing, when I used to practice midwifery, um, I don't want to serve every mom. Every mom that comes through my door is not right for me at all. And right. in fact, would yeah. be dangerous for me to say universally yes. So like, that's not what marketing is. We're not mm -hmm. trying to get everyone to come through the door. We're trying to get just your right clients to come through the door. And what, yeah. who your right clients are is dramatically varied depending on, you know, where you're practicing, what your experience is, um, mm -hmm. you know, what your personality, like there's just so many variables, right? So that's what the yeah. first chapter in this course is, is actually called um, mm -hmm. ideal client avatar, cr crafting your ideal client avatar, which is like this idea of like mm -hmm. projecting all of your hopes and dreams and images and, and thoughts about your, who you want to work with onto this like you can picture mm -hmm. like a blue body avatar. Um, we project, we project our <laughs> client out onto that. And yeah. that's, that's who we're trying to attract. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Well, and it, it really like teaches you kind of like that concept of ideal client avatar yeah. is that that makes it so that you can get crystal yeah. clear. So then marketing doesn't feel as overwhelming and as painful as some people kind exactly. of perceive it to be exactly and then it just flows from it, that's that, exactly so. it yeah, it's like yeah. you and i have done some work fine-tuning our client avatar here for midwifery wisdom and it makes such a difference yeah. because all the copy you yeah. write all the website all the advertisements you know quote unquote uh all the copy all the right. everything written you just write to that one person mm -hmm. and then it's yeah. like it's effortless yeah it's effortless so that's yeah. what we're creating. We're yeah. creating a yeah. system for midwives so that it's like really effortless for them to sign up. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Work smarter, not harder. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I like that phrase. <laughs> that's what I try. So, all right, let's see. Um, let's see. What is a tip for a brand new midwife starting out? We kind of already answered that. So. Yeah. Go to the next see. question. We can skip it. Yep. Does marketing cost a lot of money? Well, that is such a good question. <laughs> um, you know, it can cost everything from zero to hundreds of thousands of dollars. You guys are all familiar with the yeah. reputation of ad agencies in the U.S. Um, they make buku dollars just creating a 30-second yeah. spot in the Super Bowl commercial lineup. So, yeah, marketing can be extreme. <laughs> but for midwives, no. Actually, yeah. my goal when I teach marketing for midwives is actually to make it as inexpensive as possible. In fact, free would be optimal because, let's face it, um, there's enough expenses in the cost of midwifery already. Um, so, right. no, it does not need to be expensive with money. Uh, but it, it might be expensive with time. You might need to spend yeah. a significant amount of time setting up the systems that allow you to automate your marketing. Um, and so we go in, we explain mm -hmm. all of that in the course. Um, yeah. But yeah, I think if you're spending lots of money on ads, you're not doing it right, is my, my thought. The goal in midwifery, yeah. in, in, in marketing for midwives, I think is, is what I have coined womb marketing. Um, that word of mouth babies so that you, you, your people, yeah. your raving fan base are who keep your phone yeah. ringing. Um, and frankly, right? that takes work. And I think this is what a lot of midwives like for, like they forget that it actually takes work because you only see a client. I mean, truly the most you could see them is like maybe a year. Right. It's probably more right. like, six or nine months because they don't call until yeah. they're somewhere into their pregnancy and then they move on right. when they're maybe six weeks old. We don't see people into their lifespan. We just have this very little short window of time when we see patients. And so it's, mm -hmm. they, they love you and they have this incredible experience and then poof, they're into busy mama world. 
you know? Like, yes. Oh God. So, yes. So you don't, you have to call, you have to keep yourself top of mind right. so that they keep acting as your emissary in your community. Yeah. And that's what, that's what yes. this marketing plan is all about. Yeah. Yeah. It really helps so that, right. Cause you can get clear. Yeah. So then you can figure out a plan for yourself and what works within your specific yeah. life structure, specific business. Yeah. That's good. Okay. So no, it does not have no, to cost a lot of money. Not at all. Nope. Um, how much time should I spend on marketing my birth business? <laughs> you kind a of lot. said that. Yep. So. Yeah. A lot in the beginning. Yeah. The beginning is definitely more than later. So I would say when you're setting mm -hmm. up your practice, um, aside from all the other business setup that you have to do and maybe actual clinical, like you have to set up your clinic, um, the rest of your mm -hmm. time is going to be spent on cultivating an online presence for your business, um, which means a yeah. lot of things. It can mean obviously working on your website. It can mean working on your social media platform presence. It can mean actually joining a bunch of community chat forums and being a presence as an expert mm -hmm. in those communities. Um, and that, that I, I think we might think that's a waste of time, but it's actually not. It's incredibly valuable. Mm -mm. Now don't do it in a group that has 10 people. That's not gonna have a great ROI. Um, you know, choose your big, maybe 10 uh, yeah. choose your big <laughs> groups of, of local yeah. Um, you know, moms or local play groups or local chat, you know, natural, mm -hmm. like any, whatever you find, but there's going to be some local groups that really have um, a lot of content um, questions. And then just over mm -hmm. time, naturally, you don't just like come in as a, you know, raving lunatic expert, but more as that, like, <laughs> well, you can, oh, but it's yeah. great. It's ineffectual. <laughs> Some people look for that. Yeah. <laughs> but really, you just you just yeah. continue to watch and you just continue to answer and it will establish yourself as the expert. And that is a great way to start to get those those ins. The other way that um, I love mm -hmm. to um, bring people in is to have um, various online offerings so that you can have some free resource uh, you know, nope. like an audio, a video, a, a blog post, a PDF down, something mm -hmm. that meets your client's pain yeah. points. And so you just keep offering to your community. So all of this yeah. strategic kind of offerings, I mean, I don't know, do you have another word for it? Yeah. Well, I think with those offerings, right, what are those offerings? They're things that bring value mm -hmm. in some way. Mm -hmm to your ideal client you know so it's like and then kind of like you were saying with the email list with the website yeah. with the social media and all of it works together it's yeah. like gears on a whatever yeah. that kind of click all together and so when they're all moving and you put in that time in the beginning to get things either automated fully thought out get your messaging right you know figure out your goals like what am I even trying to do here then things start to fall into place where it becomes yeah. easier <laughs> your time but you got to put kind of put in that work in the beginning yeah I used so getting clear getting some guidance is helpful. exactly and and the, the sort yeah. of the rule of thumb that I give midwives is I say what's the ideal size of your business like how many how many midwives will you actually yeah. or how many clients will you actually serve in your midwifery business a month how many mm -hmm. prenatals a week like get really specific yeah. like do you want to be in the office five and a half days a week or do you want to be in the office two and a half days a week Whatever it is, yep. whatever the number of clients is, calculate based on hour long prenatals, how many hours a day or a week you would be working with clients. Before you have those clients, mm -hmm. those are your marketing hours. You're still spending them with mm -hmm. your clients. They're just future clients instead mm -hmm. of current clients. That's Does true. that make sense? That's so like true. if you want to see, yeah, let's say three to four clients a month, that works out in average to being about 16 to 20 hours of prenatals or postpartum visits plus a birth every other week, right? That that's the time. Mm -hmm. So that means one all nighter and two and a half days a week. That's your marketing, which mm -hmm. means that you are going to be mm -hmm. spending 16 hours a week at your computer, creating content, answering blog yeah. posts, you know, refining your website, like that's the time right. deficit. So as the clients start yeah. to take those times, you do less and less. Does that make mm -hmm. sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it does make sense. And that, I mean, six, 
16 hours a week sounds scary, but when you think about it, a lot of that is the relationship exactly. building that's part. That's the email, and that's the Facebook so, comments at six throat. in the morning yeah. when you're, you know, just laying yeah. in bed on your phone. Like it doesn't have to be, you know, it can, you can fit it in all over. You can fit it in sitting at the park with your kids. You can fit it in, you know, while you're cooking yeah. dinner. Like there's a lot mm -hmm. of yep. like dual time use that we can employ, yes. but, but ultimately yeah. You got to work the number of hours you intend to work from the beginning. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right, right. No, that's a good, that's a good tip. Yeah. All right. Being visible. How do you get over the fear? Yeah, this must come from a yeah. midwife who knows that I'm like, you got to turn your camera on, turn your camera on. <laughs> no. Yeah. Well, yeah. you know, again, it just goes back to that idea that you are creating content for your ideal client. So your ideal client wants to see you. They want to know you. They want to know what they've they purchased. Need yeah, they know. need to they know. Need to see exactly. You. Right. So your ideal client yeah. will actually love seeing you in your all your quirky, yeah. all of it. Like in my ripped yes. sweater and drinking my coffee. <laughs> my, uh, <laughs> Beautiful. Seriously, yeah. like I, I think one of the ideal yeah. ways to connect with your ideal client is that you are relatable. You are personable, yes. you are real, mm -hmm. you are authentic, um, and you continue yeah. to drive your message. And, you know, one of my long-term mm -hmm. messages has been, you know, we're, you do the best that you can. Perfection is not a possibility. It's actually, it doesn't, it's, it doesn't exist at all. Perfection is not the goal. Mm -hmm. It's actually that nope. um, you, you continue to bring your whole self to the process mm -hmm. um, in midwifery yeah. and in every pursuit. And that, that whole self process, bringing your whole self to whatever you're doing yeah. um, is yeah. I think the, the, one of the foundational ways to connect with your ideal people. Because if you have some kind of facade, <laughs> yeah, sorry. If you have some kind of facade or some kind of, um, you know, at whatever you're faking yeah. it like if, if people can yeah, see it if, yeah, yeah if they see it number one and you'll attract the wrong people yes like you don't want to do and, that it's <laughs> like i know it's like a bold claim yeah. but i would say that this marketing for midwife mm -hmm. course is probably going to decrease your transport rate significantly because when you get Maybe, clear yeah. when you get really clear about who you're meant to serve mm -hmm. what you're here to do who your ideal yeah. client is then you write copy, you create messaging, you speak in such a way that you automatically mm -hmm. attract your ideal client and you repel yeah. the people who are not meant for you, which means that you don't go good. through, you know, three <laughs> yeah. to eight months of torture with a client that really isn't meant to be with you. And we all know it. And I don't mean this as any kind of judgment yeah. about people other than people are crazy, <laughs> but, but, you know, like, <laughs> What? We, yeah. We all, I mean, there's some friends that people that can't be my friends. There's lots of people that could not be a partner to me. There's like, you know, it's like, yeah, we yeah. don't get along with everyone. And so and that's okay. it, it's totally okay. Yeah. And so when we're talking about mm -hmm. midwifery, midwives have this, this idea, this antiquated idea that like anyone who calls me, I have to say yes to. And I just wanted them to know, yeah. like, actually nothing could be further from the truth. And the clearer you right. get on your marketing, those folks won't call anymore. You know, like, I think I've told this mm -hmm. story before. Sorry if I'm repeating myself. But like early, when, early in my midwifery care, when I was still figuring this out, um, I had mm -hmm. a couple situations in a row, which always is like that universe being like, ding, 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 pay attention, right? Yeah. Hello. I had a couple experiences in a row where <laughs> yeah. I was sitting across the couch from some nice, some sweet, pregnant somebody who was like, I'm so happy to be here. Like, I can't wait to have my baby with you. And so I like would investigate more and I'd be like, so what are you really hoping for? What are you wishing, you know, you, you get with this birth? And they'd be like, well, I totally want a water birth. I'm not sure if I want my epidural or not, but I definitely want a water birth. You'd be like, um... <laughs> you don't, wait. Like, I don't know that we do have at home. Or, word. Okay, like yeah. you're sitting in an out of hospital <laughs> or, birth center. <laughs> with, like, yeah. 
so so that's a perfect example of like nothing wrong nothing okay. bad it's just that my marketing no. was so ineffectual that this person sitting across from me didn't even know what she was choosing right right that's, that's a problem so like in the course we yeah. talk about um a, a different styles of writing copy, different styles of marketing. And one of them is mm -hmm. like what we call Frank copy. When you really like say who this is not for. Yes. And I actually, I love this type of marketing in midwifery because there is a significant yeah. portion of the population that is not mm -hmm. eligible for home birth, for birth center birth. Yes. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't want a natural birth. Right, you know, like which is which, fine, but exactly. they don't waste their time. Exactly, right? so this don't girl waste time, don't waste their time. On the couch, I had to be like, yeah. So right. that's not a like. I had to like walk her through the process and be like, you can't have an epidural here. Like that's not even an option. And her whole right. reality like crumbled in front of me because at the time the oh, hospital, no. I know, so sad. But the hospital yeah. across the street doesn't offer a water birth. And so water, the only way to get a water birth mm -hmm. is- So it was like one, one or the exactly. other. Exactly, and I think if more people yeah. understood that in, in our marketing, yeah. there would be less of these challenges. That's just a really simple one. But even more so, yeah. um, you know, there's, there's situations where you can actually write copy that says, don't call me if this isn't for you. And the, and the, if you write that, like we're coaching you to do it, those people will mm -hmm. not call. They'll be like, Oh, this is horrible. But everybody who wants that, <laughs> I, wish I, know. I think she yeah. is. <laughs> but everybody who wants that is yeah. like, yes, finally someone who right. gets it, you know, that's the light yeah. the divine yeah. line. And that makes all the difference. Right. That means that you're attracting yeah. your people or as we call them, peeps, mm -hmm. your peeps. <laughs> Cute. I don't know why I love that word, but I do. I always picture yeah. the little yeah. Easter fluffy, nasty marshmallow peeps. Yeah. Those are my peeps. They like sit in a ring around me. Uh, anyway, oh, it's a visual. You're in. You're getting into springtime there. We I'm are. Sure. <laughs> so peeps, peeps. peeps on the brain. Yeah. yeah. Don't eat those yeah. marshmallow things. Though. Oh. They're really gross. They, yeah. You know what I'm talking about? They this are fluffy. Thing. Yes, it. Don't eat this. The the peeps. Yeah, don't eat them. Yeah, no, they are gross. It's not really yeah. food. Kids love them. It's like Twinkies. Because they're just it's covered in not sugar. Not food. Not food. Yeah. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> it's one of those things that lasts for like 20 years yeah. or 100 we years or something. We call that edible can... food-like substance. <laughs> yes. Yes. Exactly what that is. Oh. So I guess, yeah. So in terms of being visible, yeah. getting over the fear that it's super necessary yep. that people see you and specifically in midwifery, right? right? Because you're really getting in their business. Yeah. You know, they need to feel safe around yeah. you. And if they don't even see your face, yeah. they're, yeah. you know, or they don't feel like, yeah. is she being vulnerable? Cause look how vulnerable I'm being, you know? Well, so exactly. That's, that's such a good point. Yeah. I would say like, this is totally on a tangent, but bear with me for a second. Mm -hmm. um, you know, one of the tangent. other main pain points in midwifery is a real worry about our liability um, you know, midwives juggle yeah. the pain or the responsibility of being like, should I get malpractice insurance? I can't really right. even justify affording it, but I'm so terrified of having my house taken in some kind of lawsuit. Like, oh my God, what should I do? Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I, I've done a lot of investigation around um, insurance um, or, you know, malpractice insurance and and claims against midwives um, around the country because I get a lot of those calls. And, um one of the reasons why OBs are sued so frequently is because they are seen as behind a glass wall. They, they are, they are, mm -hmm. they are aloof. They're not emotionally involved. There's no connection. Mm -hmm. um, they, you mm -hmm. see them for five minutes in a prenatal and then they come in when you're pushing, yep. maybe, maybe they only come in when you're crowning, you know? Right. And so there's right. no right. actual connection. And so, one of the, you know, move, like midwifery is trying to mimic a lot of obstetrics in the U.S. And so um, yeah. mainstream midwifery anyway. And so one of the moves right. is right. to actually pull midwives back behind this glass wall as well and make them, you know, mm -hmm. use a call service and, you know, not triage over the phone and like have all these the yeah. channels to kind of direct their clients. Um, and keep them fairly mm -hmm. unapproachable, unreachable. Um, and I think 
like mm. whatever's happened in the hospital, like I can't comment on that. That's not my area of expertise, but in community-based birth, yeah. I would say, I think that's mm -hmm. really a danger. Um, yeah. I think that actually building those, not over, like not codependent, but, but like building those right. mutually vulnerable relationships um, is one yeah. of the best preventative ways um, to, to have yeah. a, not have a lawsuit. If they know you yeah. and are invested in you, your practice, right. you as a right. midwife, right. Um, a lawsuit is much, I mean, certainly we're all doing the best we can yeah. in the clinical aspects and, and getting excellent risk right. assessment skills. That's a whole nother webinar, but, but hopefully right. um, we're making choices in such a way um, mm -hmm. that we're making safe calls, but even with safe calls, we can have poor mm -hmm. outcomes. And so, yeah. so really the, one of the best ways to prevent, um, the, the, the potential, uh, liability is, is to be seen, mm -hmm. yeah. to be seen. And yeah. I don't mean like yeah. the inside of your car while you're driving your kids to work screaming, like not that kind of scene. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, although if you want to, yeah. right ahead. No, but I mean like, you could, I yeah. mean like, um, being clear about who you are as a provider, yeah. what your experience is, yeah. and then being visible to your clients, both before they hire you. And then certainly the whole time that they have employed you. That's a real goal. For yeah. sure. Thanks for that for vulnerability. Sure. Yeah. Tip. Yeah. Yes. So it's, yeah. So making people feel safe is important. And I think that just on that tangent, right, getting to know people on a personal level where there isn't that sterilization yeah. of contact where the relationship is bit more yeah. distant gets more distant yeah. then are you going to be right because this isn't that at the heart of midwifery is being with women yeah. like it's the ta you know with that person yeah. relationship and you can sense yeah. things that maybe you wouldn't be able to if there was a bigger distance yeah yeah I mean like and like this again we're on another tangent but one of the one of the real tenets of midwifery is that it's actually mm -hmm. um very it, it creates autonomy. It creates sovereignty, mm -hmm. right? So one yeah. of the hallmarks of midwifery is informed decision-making, not yeah. informed consent. There's a huge difference. Informed consent yeah. means I will bully you until you say yes to what I'm suggesting. Informed yeah. decision-making says I will unbiasedly present all of these options and totally release my personal ego and bias around your decision. Right. I will support the sovereignty yeah. of your informed decision, whatever it may be. Mm -hmm. And that, that mm -hmm. split, that difference between obstetrics and midwifery is, is profound. Huge. It's huge. And because yeah. it's so different it and, and so, and so powerful and our mm -hmm. society has been in the patriarchal matrix for two millennia, we are a highly mm -hmm. conditioned group of individuals who don't understand Ooh, yes. <laughs> how to take mm -hmm. that power or I mean, you don't yeah. on the surface understand lots of people understand and lots of people have been developing their understanding of this right. but we don't on the mm -hmm. surface automatically most of us be like yeah absolutely it's all my responsibility and my choice because that requires right. another conscious level right so one of the important mm -hmm. things that we are transparent communicating in a transparent method is this idea of like, I'm not your savior. I'm not your, I, I'm not your, your person on high. Like, I'm not going to do this for you. This is entirely your work. I am but a guy. Yes. And if, if yeah. we spent the time, you know, communicating this to our potential clients, they will come with a lot better understanding of the level of consciousness that mm -hmm. they're taking on. Like there's this great yeah. midwife here in Australia who I love. And we interviewed for the worldwide midwifery podcast, um, episode one, actually, mm -hmm. she's amazing. Um, her name's Hannah Dolan and she, she has this great analogy. She calls, um, midwife Sherpas, which I, I really yeah. love because it, mm -hmm. it brings up such a beautiful organic role, like Mm -hmm. she, she says uh, some, some really great things you have to listen to the podcast, but, but her, the idea of a shirt, like if you can picture a Sherpa in the Himalayas, right. They are absolutely mm -hmm. of service. Like it's a beautiful, like I'm of service and I will help carry 
some of your baggage and I will help point out the least treacherous path. But I cannot climb it for you. You have to. Yeah. And I, I just love yeah. that imagery because that is, that yeah. is actually holistic midwifery. That That's what it's about. It's like you climbing yeah. the mountain. Like, I, yeah. I've been there before. I've been there yeah. a bunch of times before. I don't need to climb yeah. the mountain again. You're climbing the mountain. And I agree yeah. to climb with you, pointing out the dangerous, you know, pathways and the easiest, fastest mm -hmm. route. And I will even shoulder some of your baggage, but I cannot do it for you. And I just love that imagery. Yeah. And I think we yeah. have to do a lot in the onboarding of clients to educate them about this level of responsibility and our role mm -hmm. in their process. Mm -hmm. Because if they mm -hmm. come into it thinking that we'll be like the local doc, right. whisking, unavailable, directive, yeah. And right. risking it at the last minute right. to save the day, we're screwed. Mm -hmm. Like that is a recipe for yeah. a lawsuit right there. Yeah. 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 Well, isn't it the basis of everything, right? Unmet expectations yeah. and communication is huge. And so that's all part of it with, you know, marketing your services mm -hmm. so that the communication, mm -hmm. the expectations are clear. So then you just avoid, mm -hmm. right? The people who wouldn't be a good fit, the situation yes. that you're just trying to avoid. Yep. You got it. You're setting it up that foundation from that's the right start. that's right so. that's why marketing is so important okay. like people are like oh whatever I'm yeah. like i can write a facebook post i'm like no it's so much more <laughs> so much more it is it's foundational to it your is. entire practice and i'm so happy that yeah you know we're getting to yeah. chat about this today thank you mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah no i mean there are some people out there who do mark or argue that marketing is like should be like the bulk of your business right. Because you know, to be bringing people in and the rest of it is the service. Right. It, because it's, it's really so. not, like, I think there's a big difference between marketing and advertising. Like anyone yeah. can write an ad, yeah. but that has nothing right. to do with actually the work of marketing, who you are, no. what you do no. and mm -hmm. why you do it. <laughs> yeah. You know, Simon Sinek, there was a why. Yeah. So I was going to say that. Yeah. Yeah. We, we're yeah. Well, he has that quote. I think it's yeah. him. Right. People don't buy what you sell. They buy why you yep, sell it. That's exactly. So tell your why right. and be passionate. And that's coming from a place people will resonate with it. And you'll start to attract the right people and repel the that's wrong right. people. That's right. That's exactly. Right. That's okay. Because there's a midwife for everybody. There is, right? There's a provider soon, for everybody. We graduate more midwives. <laughs> yes, yes. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's another little rabbit hole we could get. But yeah. Um, okay. So that's good. I like that. So. Um, what about marketing in states where out of hospital midwifery is not legal? Yeah, I, I, uh, I have a lot of questions in this realm and, um, it's even more important that you have word of mouth babies. Um, mm -hmm. so there's only, I think two, <clears throat> two or three states where, it's not just illegal, it's actually fairly illegal and includes felony jail time. So I, I don't mm -hmm. have a comment in those states. Right. Work on changing the legislature in your state. <laughs> like That's where you need to put your energy yeah. instead of serving clients. You need to change the law um, and then serve the clients. Um, mm -hmm. But in, in those states where it's just illegal, it's just not legally defined, there's no precedent, nobody's really, you know, paying attention to that part of the world. Um, I think you can actively and safely practice. And I think actually the more safe, active midwives there are in that state, the more likelihood that licensure and legality will come. Um, mm -hmm. As an aside, like this is a total parentheses aside, I actually am yes. not a fan of government controlling our bodily functions and who can call themselves different yeah. names and what training. I'm not a fan mm -hmm. of that, but yeah. it's unlikely that we're going to change that boat. So instead I kind of have a list of ideal things that should be included in state licensure. So if anyone's working on that, feel free to call me. But like Oklahoma is a great example. Oklahoma has been illegal with active midwifery practices and birth centers throughout the state for decades. Um, and mm -hmm. there are a lot of midwives practicing and some of them have really dubious kind of processes and understandings. And some are like the right. nation's top midwives are practicing in Oklahoma. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. um, like the midwives yeah. at Tulsa Birth Center, Ex extraordinary midwives. Um, and their steady, solid, powerful, passionate presence with great outcomes, awesome protocols, regular marketing mm -hmm. has made it so that they're in a mm -hmm. legislative process this year that will likely go through. Yeah. Um, and because they mm -hmm. already were so firmly established, <clears throat> those, uh, those laws that are being drafted are being drafted by those midwives. Yeah. With the, mm -hmm. the, 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 the clinical boundary, the policy and procedures that they already function with un under. And that to me is mm -hmm. the goal of creating a solid presence in an unlicensed state is that actually you create the gold standard that everything gets created around. So there's this real, um, yeah. I was told this, I don't know, 20 years ago. Um, I don't even remember the midwife that said it to me, but I remember it like a light bulb moment. It was like, bing, something went off in me. Mm -hmm. And I was, yeah. I was sort of talking about this energy in midwifery, which is kind of like sneaking and hiding and playing less than and shrinking to fit and, and not, mm -hmm. not letting our light shine essentially. Mm -hmm. And um, this midwife said to me, midwives need to stop sneaking in the back door and they need to walk through the front door like they own the house. Yes. I know, right? And that energy <laughs> yeah. shift, that mindset shift in your being yeah. really changes mm -hmm. so much. And so like in my consulting, mm -hmm. that's, that's like a subtle theme of what I'm doing is, is helping midwives mm -hmm. to step into their power and let their light shine. And obviously, yeah. if you're in an illegal or a legally questionable state, that's really hard to do because you make yourself a target. And let's right. be real, the, the American Medical Association and ACOG have real, really strong power, firepower, and they are looking for targets. Mm -hmm. Like they're actively looking yeah. for targets. Yeah. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. You know, this, <laughs> never mind. We won't even go into it, but let's say. <laughs> That's I know. I, I have some definite <laughs> insider yeah. information about ACOG meetings mm -hmm. actively campaigning to hunt down midwives. But, but anyway, the, the bottom yeah. line is that um, you have to take care of yourself first. But if, as long as you have reasonable understanding, legal knowledge, that you are not in personal or professional risk by practicing where you are and openly practicing where you are, then I think there's no mm -hmm. reason why you shouldn't become um, as big as you want to be. And some midwives never want to yeah. do more than two clients a month. They like their small practice yeah. and that's fine. I, I don't mean yeah. everyone should do that. Mm -hmm. But there are many, many passionate, skilled, devoted midwives who are ready to move mm -hmm. to yeah. hiring a second midwife, to opening a facility, to you know, really changing the nature of birth in their communities. And that's mm -hmm. this course you know, can help all of them, but especially really mm -hmm. midwives step into their, their power and, and believe that they right. own the house. And they do, because as long as your phone yeah. is ringing, people want what you have to offer and you have a right to be there. Yeah. Well, and people need midwives. They need midwives. Exactly. Like, <laughs> preacher for the mountaintops all the time. Midwives, right? It's the answer to the whole fiasco we're in in the United States. But like, you know, because I live in one of those states where licensure is, uh, not a thing you know that they're fighting for really really hard yes. in this state um so it's tough because there is that fear that i sense yeah. you know in that community is that you know not with everybody but you know everybody's different but it's just even if you don't feel comfortable being like super visible like hey look at me i'm a midwife like you know, whatever the marketing piece, the honing your message, that it getting clear on who you want to attract, oh even if it's it even is more in a different sense. Yeah, it's you know, even it's, more it's important still super in those areas yeah. because if you attract the yeah. wrong person who decides to report you, that's terrible. It makes it even more of a risky situation, right? It's being clear on who it is that would be, you know, best with you personally and your services in that type of environment that's where. <clears throat> licensure and all that that's right politics going on is that's there right. so it's super important that you know regardless if you're wanting to be that like you know 
huge giant presence, you know, visually on all social media channels and everywhere, or being that midwife who just serves the community kind of quietly yeah, in the I background. Think either is okay. You're still marketing. There's still you marketing. You still need yep. to market. Yep. You still need to know your message. You still need to be clear. Yep. On all of that. That's so, a great recap. That's exactly that's it. And in those questionable yeah. areas, it's even more important because you need to only be attracting your mm -hmm. right people. Yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah. Right. And to be able to understand who that yeah. is ahead of time. Yeah. yeah. That's good. Okay. Um, why does your messaging or presentation of your services even matter? Like why, you know, I don't know how to ask this question. Like, yeah. We've been you saying know, it a little bit. I mean, one of the reasons it matters yeah. is because you need to attract your ideal client and not, mm -hmm. not randoms, like not people that yeah. don't align with your message and your morals and your experience and all that. So like part of it is that, mm -hmm. but part of it is also, um, it, it actually helps to refine who you are and what you're doing in your life. I mean, this is totally mm -hmm. a tangent, but <laughs> um, midwifery is fucking exhausting y'all. Midwifery is exhausting. <laughs> I mean, yeah. if, if we were just talking about the politics alone, it would be exhausting, right? And then you have actual mm -hmm. all-nighters, and then you have all of the medical yeah. knowledge and all of the, all of the things. And the emotional piece, too. Yeah. The emotional exhaustion. Exactly. Yeah. All of that. And, mm -hmm. and it, it really gets easier the more you get clear on what you're doing and why you're doing it. And, yeah. and what I see most midwives doing instead is hyper-focused on the how. How will I do this? Yeah. But how is actually the very last part of the equation. And a lot of people forget this. You have to know what you're doing. Clear, like, And I don't just mm -hmm. mean like I'm doing midwifery. I mean like get really crystal clear. Yeah. You know, I yeah. serve clients in, who are in their childbearing age, but not teenagers and not 40-year-olds having one baby, mm -hmm. first, second, third, fourth babies. After fifth, it's right. a grand multip. I, as a new midwife, am not comfortable taking grand multips because the risk of hemorrhage. I only take G1 through four in their 20s or 30s mm -hmm. who lived in within 30 miles of my, like you get really what right. you're doing. Then why, why? And there's a why, like, because it's yeah. my experience, because it's legal, blah, blah. But right. there's even, the there's a type. deeper why which is like yeah why midwifery matters to you not necessarily yeah. to your community to the world but like you right. um then you yeah. got to figure out where and who mm -hmm. and how much and after that right finally how starts to take place and if you prioritize mm -hmm. how you actually block yourself from all of this other deeper knowing but we want yeah. like we want to know how we're getting from point a to point b so badly as humans that we yeah. like obsess yeah. about like you know the timing and the sequence and the who like what but actually that's the very last thing you do so when you really get mm -hmm. marketing and you spend time defining your ica defining your why clear on your message mm -hmm. crafting your content suddenly mm -hmm. a greater peace comes over you. I know this sounds really hokey, but I'm serious. And no. also, yeah. you also get a real sense of purpose. Um, and yeah. I know there are a lot of midwives out there who are really burned out, who are fried, yeah. who are leaving midwifery. Mm -hmm. um, or the other really negative side of that coin is that they're staying and having bad outcomes because they're not present. Yeah. And, um, mm -hmm. That is a direct result of not living your why. Yeah. So marketing is so much more than advertising. It's really, it has very yes. little to do with the ad mm -hmm. that you eventually place somewhere. It, it actually has a lot more to yeah. do with message and what mm -hmm. purpose and the mission. Yeah. And so it's actually getting really yeah. clear on your past, present, and future, churning the course. But like I said, the how, the course comes at the very end of this process um, right. and so it's it's right. so much more complex than it thinks than you think it off the beginning and and we've tried to do this mm -hmm. process justice in our course and um really excited to share it with folks it um yeah and and i i love to see what's possible when people really define their why and discover this like 
Yeah. You know, then they can walk through the front door like they own the house. They're not sneaking around yeah. anymore. They're not like you know, ambiguity right. and confusion and being like, I don't know what I'm, oh, I'm on call mm -hmm. again. Oh, if somebody else is in labor. And they spend most of their career reacting instead of being proactive. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the biggest difference yeah. that really changes, yeah. changes the pathway. Did I answer? Right. I, what was well, the even... question? I kind of lost the question. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, what is your like presentation, your message and the, how you present yeah. it matters. So, I mean, that is a beautiful answer to that question is just, I think when you say that, and I don't know if I probably heard this somewhere in one of the <laughs> You know, business whatever stuff but just kind of like right your why is it that's like that lighthouse in the fog Ooh, and you just beautiful. it's your guiding light towards you know when things do yes. get you're in that thick pea yes. soup that is like Mugodium. you know bad things or <laughs> yeah <laughs> oh, <that's so> <laughs> exactly oh, you're at a meconium birth with d cells <laughs> yeah you need a lighthouse yeah you can't see anything God. yes so just remembering your why yeah. when you get to that moment where you're like I don't know if I've got what it yeah. takes or I don't know that I can do this yeah. anymore or like oh it'd be so much easier if I had somebody else taking that yeah. heavy responsibility off my shoulders but then you remember your why and then it helps pull you through that that's you know imagery. so that's Im that's beautiful imagery Kristen yeah. that's so beautiful yeah. I love that thank you for sharing that yeah yeah but I think too in terms of present presentation because not only do we go over the foundations you know in the course the foundations of figuring out why your messaging all that you also cover like like the visual side how to get that yeah. website how to get your you know branding set up the visuals to be consistent so you're recognizable not only as a human but also like visually yes. so there's that yes. and I think in terms of presentation being it of in a professional cohesive way as bad as it sounds right people have this instant like they judge you know they're yeah. well right like just scanning the thing and they could see oh is that look like it's put together and well thought out and they associate that with like competence yeah which they do it's has crazy. nothing to do with well, it a lot it's the same yeah. kind of like visually hyper focused society we live in where they judge people based mm -hmm. on what clothes they're wearing or you know all kinds of things and yeah. I, I want to change right. a lot of that and yet <laughs> we live in this society and there's not a lot that you can do to alter that yeah. snap 10 second judgment that our culture is programmed with we are an image right. obsessed culture and so yes. your images, mm -hmm. your, 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 everything, your colors, your fonts, right. your logo, your everything, right. the order of the page right. is a part of what people yeah. are judging. And so, yeah, we lay out all right. of those details and give you yeah. the tools to design the content to look the way you mm -hmm. want to look. And then there's nothing like you can look yeah. at anything. You can be orange or totally. purple or you know green and it doesn't even have to be fancy no, right i mean it's something you basic. can do yourself but as long it's as it matches that and how to set up that structure yeah of your ica right yes so, yeah so if if your aesthetic misses like if we're missing who you're trying to attract it it definitely doesn't yeah. work so that's why that's the first yeah. step but then yeah we give you all the tools mm -hmm. to actually design websites yeah. and social media and graphics and all all the things and yep. Kristen Kristen is mm -hmm. my graphic designer brand manager brilliant visual person <laughs> and you all she's poured so much love into this course with her beautiful massaging of all the images yeah. so yeah. We have um, downloadable yeah. worksheets with every single lesson. Mm -hmm. And like Kristen, yep. you've had a big hand in those. Like they're, they're really, I think, pretty powerful. There, there's a lot yeah. there. Well, I think it helps like, cause that's, that's my whole thing, right? Visually communicating yes. messages. So taking your expertise, your knowledge and making it so it's visually represented yes. in a way that can be absorbed easily. Yes you know, for people taking the exactly. course. Exactly. So, yeah. That's what yeah. It's all about. And these so, downloadable it's, yeah. sheets, they really Marketing. walk you through it all. And, um, and they, yep. you can take them with, you know, you can download them, print them off and they they leave all these mm -hmm. worksheet parts so that you can really um, take the course with you. It's not just all online because I know everything's online right now. And most people are shying away from paper, but sometimes some of the visual mm -hmm. pieces, you have to see it to really get it, you know? And so that's yeah. why we have these yeah. takeaways so that you can, 
take yeah. home what you need to. Yeah, it's going to be really exciting. Right. I can't wait to see the response. We, yeah, it is. we release it on the 7th. So that's just in a couple of days. Mm -hmm. That's Monday. Yeah, Monday. Really yeah, exciting. Monday. Yeah, Labor Day. Soon, soon. It is exciting. Yes. Oh my gosh. This year is flying by. It really is. All right. Let's see. I think we've got a couple more. So, um, balancing the clinical side of midwifery and the business marketing side, oh. finding that balance between. I kind of kind of covered that a little so bit. So much, but... though. I, I'm I'm glad to mm -hmm. hear the difference because a lot of people don't even see the difference. But when you're a birth right. business entrepreneur, you're both a practice owner and a pr mm -hmm. you're a practice manager and a business owner. So you're, you're two right. things. Um, and yeah. in any mainstream medical world, those are two different job descriptions with two different people. Mm -hmm. So the fact that mm -hmm. you as one person is doing them both can be quite exhausting. And then if you're also a practicing midwife, yeah. that's actually three full-time jobs, which is really crazy. <laughs> um, yeah. but, but the, the bottom line is that you do need to keep those separate. We go really in deep mm -hmm. into this in the startup midwifery business, right course. Um, and mm -hmm even with a downloadable um, job description of each so that you can get really clear on, mm -hmm. on where you are because, and, and this is sort of a, it's hard to describe, but let me do my best is like, if you make decisions as a practice manager for the business, something's wrong. Mm -hmm. And if you make decisions mm -hmm. as the business owner for the practice, something's wrong. And I know it doesn't seem that way, but it yeah. is. And so you have to know what hat you're wearing before you decide, answer, respond. All, all of the interactions with your business are muddied when you're taking all these jobs mm -hmm. at once. And so when we clearly mm -hmm. define them and you can tease apart what piece you're actually dealing with in that moment, you're going to make much smarter and healthier decisions. And this is a really mm -hmm. subtle distinction. It's not abundantly clear in the beginning why this is so important until things go wrong. Until yeah. you're losing money, until you have investigation, an audit or a lawsuit, until you have a patient complaint, until you have a crisis in the clinic, like until things go wrong, you don't understand why it's so important that these positions be separate in your brain and in your decision making. So we go through that mm -hmm. a lot in the first course, but in terms of, of, mm -hmm. of understanding it from a business perspective, um, I recommend that all entrepreneurial midwives spend a lot of time defining those two roles and then being really clear about which hat they're wearing when they're making calls. Because if you make decisions as a business owner for your clinic, um, they could be potentially biased. And if you make decisions for your business as a midwife, you could potentially go under. Um, mm -hmm. If you make decisions as a practice manager for your business, you could potentially lose a lot of money. And so all of these things are really, I, I don't know if that makes sense, but it's really important and it doesn't mm -hmm. make sense until you're losing things. And then you're like, oh, right. I was right. using the wrong part of my brain to make that call. Because right. it's not abundantly obvious because, you know, in the beginning when everything's like flowers and roses and you're like, I'm opening a practice and there's balloons coming out your ass and everyone's so excited. <laughs> you, know, you don't really think yeah. through how diametrically opposed even your own viewpoints are when you put on those different hats. Mm -hmm. What yeah. should happen during the course of care from the midwife's perspective is very different than the practice manager's perspective that is still very different mm -hmm. than from the, the owner's perspective. And if you were truly the owner making decisions with your owner's hat, you would do things differently than if you were the midwife. Yeah. Or if you were the practice for manager sure. considering the results mm -hmm. for everyone. And that's why it's really mm -hmm. important that we get those distinct. And I, that's probably all I can say about mm -hmm. it now. We have a lot of this in the, in yeah. the starter midwifery business right course. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that yeah. makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. It makes, yeah, it makes yeah. sense. Too. Okay, good. Good. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, I guess. We have a question know, here could... on the oh, chat. Somebody... Um, do you have plans oh, on creating okay. a series of talks related to the student aspect of midwifery? 
We don't, but what a great idea. We just um, answered that Thanks. question in a 50 page full color document, <laughs> if you guys don't know. Yes, we Last did. <laughs> we released this apprentice handbook, um, the full mm -hmm. um, step by step guide to midwifery becoming a midwife in the US. Awesome. And it's for sale on our website. So if you haven't seen that yet, check it out midwiferywisdom.com forward slash shop. Mm -hmm. And um, yep. yeah, that's pretty powerful. And I do have a student discount for that product. So it's intended for preceptors mm -hmm. to take and edit for their own practices. But if you want to just thumb through the whole step-by-step -step process, you can buy it for yourself and your personal use um, for half price. Um, and so that's student 50 is the code at checkout if you want to grab a copy. But yeah, most, we've had some rave reviews, people reviewing it. And um, it is, it is quite a hefty document. We have the recommended reading list from beginning to end. We have all of the uh, HIPAA guidelines for charting and what else is in there? I can't remember. Yeah, it's got like every, everything, everything you can think of. Yeah, it's pretty thorough. <laughs> More than I even knew. <laughs> what? Yeah. Yeah. Pretty thorough. It's cool. Yeah. Though. Very cool. Yeah. Yeah. And it's going to help, I think, awesome. create a, a tool for communication between midwives and their preceptors, because that's been a real, students and their preceptors, has been a real problem in the history of midwifery. Mm -hmm. We've had some really yeah. intense hazing and bullying in midwifery. So we want to change that. And this is a great, great yeah. resource to help change that. Yep. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks for doing it. this with me today. Do we get through all our questions? Yeah, always. Pretty much. Yeah. It's just where you can learn about. So the Marketing for Midwives course comes out on Monday. Yeah. It's Birth Business Club. I'll, I'll add the links to the handbook and the Chat. course and the thing if somebody's interested. Cool. But yeah, and then if you guys have questions, even if you're watching this on replay, yeah. you know, for future yeah. stuff or for when we have that conversation about student midwifery. Yeah, yeah we do. Then we follow, can gather those questions and we do follow the comment section for, everywhere. So you can mm -hmm. put a question at the bottom of the YouTube video or you can put a question in our lives. Mm -hmm. Um, and we go, yep. we go live every week and we try to dip into clinical and business procedure and it. process policy, you know, all the things. So if you have yeah. questions about anything in midwifery, um, in the U S mm -hmm. or abroad, um, I love to tackle it. It's one of my favorite things. And I also really love to like forensically investigate birth stories. <laughs> so this is what mm -hmm. we're going to yeah. start doing really soon is this, um, whole mm -hmm. understanding what happened in a birth um so if you have yeah. if you have a birth where you're like i just don't get what happened how could that have happened you know i love to decode that um details with you i do usually request mm -hmm. the records so if you can get your hands on the records that helps me decode it a lot mm -hmm. and if you have any pictures of the newborn baby head that's the other thing i ask for because mm. um looking at the shape of the head i can tell the shape the, the way they were sitting in the pelvis so that's a really fun uh process so we're going to do some of those in the fall but in the meantime if you have any mm -hmm. any stumped kind of scenarios where you don't understand mm -hmm. how the outcome happened like that either moms or midwives doulas anyone i'd love to do that with y'all yeah yeah and we have a big launch on monday so yeah stay tuned uh, midwifery Ooh. wisdom on yep. instagram and <laughs> all the things yeah fun. Yeah. Well, thanks for doing this with me, Kristen. I appreciate awesome. you so much. Yeah, always. It's such a dream to same, chat with you. Same. I know. Yeah, I love talking about this I stuff. I know. We're such Any day, any time. I'm good. <laughs> Birth nerds. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Alrighty, yeah, well, I love it. Okay. See you next week. We'll, we'll, yeah, next okay. week.